Hello everyone and welcome to the April Teleadvisors webinar for 2021. Uh, we're going to start today with a recording from Frances Bell. Uh, she does apologise for not being here uh, to some extent, but she also appreciates her sleep at 3am. Okay, we're starting the presentation from Frances Bell. Uh, on the FemEdTech network and the FemEdTech quilt project. Hello, I'm Frances Bell, formerly of Salford Business School. I'm retired and enjoying more time for gardening and crafting. I also find time for voluntary work, including working with and enjoying the FemEdTech network and the quilt. I'm sorry I can't be with you, I'll be asleep but the other speakers are all involved with FemEd Tech and or the quilts, so can comment and maybe answer questions. The bit.ly link at the bottom of the slide is to a g.doc with additional resources and two short scripts for doing the website walkthroughs that I've done using screenshots here for technical reasons. Here's a quick look at what we'll do. I'll do a quick introduction to the network, a bit of history, a tour of the website, talk a bit about the splots, the quilt project, a visual tour of, digital, of the digital quilt, and some last thoughts and questions that you might like to uh, discuss um, when I'm not there, and maybe I'll see them in the recording. So this is how we introduce ourselves at the website. FemedTech emerged from a self-funded social gathering of women working in UKHE in spring 2016. After much discussion, a website and Twitter account and hashtag were launched to support faster and slower conversations. It turned out that the website wasn't sustainable because of the admin associated with user accounts and organizing who was going to post. FemedTech was in, reinvigorated by shared curation on Twitter and at OER19 we launched our second more sustainable website. Uh, on Twitter you can find us at, at FemedTech and hash FemedTech and head over to our open space website to find out more and that's at http slash slash femedtech.net. At FemedTech, we wanted to support each other and to reach out beyond our starting group. Our name FemedTech points to three important threads. Feminism, whose theories can speak so much to our lived experiences. Education, the domain in which most of us work or have worked, and a site of flux. And technology, yes, it's a little bit broken, that offers so much but brings its own problems and challenges. Now I'm going to take you for a walk through the FemedTech Open Space website. But as I said, uh, uh, if you look at the uh, resources document, you'll find some uh, tips to do that yourself, and it'll probably be better than the way I'm doing it with screen uh, screenshots. So here's our uh, FemedTech homepage where we say who we are and we attribute um, those who've helped us, like Alan Levine and uh, Reclaim Hosting, our sponsors for the website. Um, and you can find out where to go from there. Look at the menu options along the top. And, uh, and there's plenty to explore, and I'm going to explain a little bit of it now. So a really good place to start before you think about contributing writings is to go and see what's already been published at femedtech.net. And I've, I've got a link here to the what you see if you get to the stories page. There are four pages of links to stories and um, you, can, uh, you can see what the most recent one is and uh, right back to the beginning to what other stories are there. 
they, they're often used to go with our projects or people can just say something that they want to say. We've had some wonderful posts shared in that way. If you want to make a, um, a post, a writing, then you click right on the uh, menu options and you pull, it pulls up a form. You don't need to create an account. You don't even have to give your name. Uh, but if you want to give your Twitter handle, it can be, um, it helps promote it. And it's very, very easy to add content to here. We would ask you the, that you go and check the code of conduct before you contribute, because all posts will be moderated and um, you and you can get the chance to change them if you choose that option. But if you want to post anonymously, you really do need to make sure that it applies with the code of conduct before you do that. And at this point, I just wanted to leave this information with you um, about the, the Splot True Writer theme that allowed us to, uh, to create this open space that we've got. And we were really keen that uh, people, that it would be equitable, accessible and inclusive and, and that participants could contribute uh, anonymously if they choose. Because, you know, we do realise that these power dynamics exist in the open community. They aren't always spoken about openly, but they're certainly there. So we're offering this facility and we know you need to use it. The, across the from across the globe i think there was an element of fear of missing out and more promised contributions were registered many arriving after the deadline the quilt was assembled in february in macclesfield just as covid reached many of the contributors countries lives changed so what happened next we saw things change rapidly, but differently in different countries. OER 20 was no longer going to be a face-to-face -face conference and went online. Um, that was a big disappointment, but luckily we'd all planned for the digital quilt and its site was launched in January 2020 at um, quilt.femedtech.net slash quilt. We think that the digital quilt was influential in encouraging the influx of contributions, but it also became more important after we lost the chance to meet up, um, see the material quilt. We had an emotion, a 30 minute session at OER 20 with approximately 100 participants. And that was an emotional session that's very difficult to explain if you didn't attend it. And I put a link to the session description that includes the video if anybody's got half an hour to, to watch it. Uh, so um, that was something I tell you. So let's walk through the FemedTech digital quilt now and see what we can see. First of all, we've got um, the images of the squares submitted, which we photographed in Macclesfield as they all arrived so that we could be sharing them and um, um, would have them even if people didn't upload their own images. So here's the Flickr album page, and uh, you can see the first two um, images that we've got there. One's crocheted from Chrissy Naranzi, and uh, Pauline Ridley, I think, was this one with the hands. It's a lovely, another lovely square. They're all really lovely. This square from New Zealand, Elsa Hack. Haxel uh, made this square and it um, has a Maori poem with an English translation with a relevant appliqued image at the centre. It's a really beautiful square. And here's a topical one for this talk. Uh, on the left is um, one of Sarah Lambert's squares and the other one on the right is uh, from North America, it's co commemorating indigenous women who are murdered or missing. So we'll have a little 
example of the Digital Quilt homepage now. The Digital Quilt uh, site was made by Anne-Marie Scott, very, very talented person. Um, I don't know, we, we, I could never have managed it without her. She did the most wonderful te technological wizardry. And uh, it's, it's a really good, really good website. And I'd, I do encourage you to go and have a look at it. So it was always our intention to have a digital version of the quilt. And it turned out to be absolutely crucial in the event uh, because we didn't have the material quilt um, at the online conference that was going to be at the at the face to face conference so uh, that's the the opening there and um, Anne Marie made this wonderful slider which has got all the four quilts in one slot and as you slide across from one to the other you see each of the four quilts in turn saying something at this point about the fact that we ended up with four quilts and um, the, we, we decided that to, to use all the squares in one quilt we would have ended up with something that was so huge and heavy we couldn't have shared it with um, with the um, with people across the world and so it was much more flexible to have four quilts and we've made them so that they'll clip together and also, if in the future anybody else wants to um, contribute by making their own quilt, if they follow our uh, dimensions, then any future quilts can um, quilt, can can clip together with any um, past quilts. And um, we use the idea of having backpack clips to clip them together. We're also going to need a little bit of Velcro to make that happen. This on the digital quilt site, these clickable links are the little eyes that are, um, appear on the squares. And if you look at the one on, in the top right hand corner of this um, of this quilt, um, it's done by Wendy Tallio. So, um, you know, she's here to tell you all about it if you, if you want to hear more about it. And if you if you don't uh, manage that, then. What you could also do is you click on that link is you get to an image and Wendy's story of her quilt and believe you me the stories of the quilts not all of them of the patches uh, not all of them have been uploaded but there are some absolutely fascinating stories there so this is my last thought a quilt that was supposed to be completed and displayed at OER20 in London in April 2020 became four quilts in a box in my home, still in the box in my home because of the pandemic. And through the uh, digital quilt website and the social media co connection, we, we achieved these connections that um, that enabled the things that people could see, the digital quilt, and the things that they couldn't see because it was in my home, the material quilt. And I think that was probably in large part because people had either participated in uh, some, uh, creating squares or had watched as other people were doing it. And I think that these offered us a symbol of hope during COVID-19. So, I'm going to leave you with a question. How can the digital and material connections complement and reinforce each other? And what can we learn from this for online pivoted uh, education in general? And I'd just like to tell you a little story about what happened with um, a group, that, a WhatsApp group that I was in uh, during the most recent lockdown. And a friend of mine wanted to create a quilt for her uh, her newly born grandson and as she liked the one that I'd done and um, and I sent her the pattern and we talked about getting fabrics and I had this a really um, inspirational idea 
the, the, the baby quilt that I had made for my grandson a few years ago um, was just in a bedroom upstairs. Nobody had touched it for months. So I was able to drop it off at my friend's house. And she had this, um, this sort of material quilt in front of her when she was trying to follow my instructions on the WhatsApp group. And I think I got the idea from our experience after OER20 last year. So here are acknowledgements to some of the people who helped and uh, thanks to all of us. Uh, thanks to Frances in her absence. Um, I think you'll agree that it was a fantastic presentation from a couple of points of view. One is the way that we can, um, I seem to feel her presence uh, there. And yes, she has a lovely voice and being able to include, uh, trust me, uh, Sarah and I didn't ask her to include our squares, but it was part of the conversation that I had with Frances and as the theme or the title of this uh, uh, it's the connecting link between uh, all of us that are presenting today. 